Hi, uh, hi everyone. We're back uh, with another round of Turing Morg interview series. I'm Alexei, tech lead at Turing. I'm Turing for, from Armenia uh, and uh, tuning in boundaryless there. Well, uh, I was working as an engineer for a long 14 years and um, Obviously, I, ha I had participated in a lot of interviews on the uh, both sides from the interviewer. There are different roles. So, uh, well, I hope this will be a good experience for you. And I'm willing to meet our new interviewee, uh, Ron Ronald. Mm, hello, man. How are you? Uh, hi, Alexi. Thanks for having me. I'm connecting from Uganda. Sounds great. So uh, I know you're a uh, Golang engineer. You're working with this technology. Uh, can you tell me more about Golang and your experience? Yeah, yeah I'm sure. So I've, uh, I've worked with Go for um, uh, just over four years now. and. Uh, uh, one of the uh, notable projects that I worked with was um, um, a webinar recording system, which uh, pretty much dealt with, it's, it's a bit like uh, what we have with Zoom today, but uh, it was uh, back in the day. Uh, they needed, uh, it was built using uh, Jitsi Meet, but uh, they needed recording. Uh, and uh, Jitsi's uh, recording implementation was a bit uh, too much for the client. So what they needed to do, uh, was have an, uh, an implementation that was a bit more scalable and easy to um, uh, like low on resources. So uh, the better source needed to work with uh, port, uh, 443. So that's one of the places where I chose to use Go. And uh, I did that using, uh, by modifying the uh, front end uh, web sockets to send better chunks to the backend. And, um, and then I'd use those connectors into, uh, okay, the, on the web socket side, I'd send them into channels and then hand them to RabbitMQ for processing so that uh, it would pretty much uh, align all those chunks and create videos in the backend. With the, even though one instance went down, the, the rest would just pick up the slack. And then when that segment ended, it would pretty much uh, send the job uh, to uh, another another instance of uh, of uh, a Golan thing that would call uh, FFmpeg in the back to compose the whole video so that they could be played back um, later when someone needed them. Yeah, so it was quite so, interesting. Yeah, interesting and sounds challenging. How uh, many years of experience do you have? Um, so as an engineer, I've been practicing for uh over seven and a half years yeah uh -huh. yeah um okay sounds sounds great what other technologies you've been using not only go can you tell me uh, so yes yeah, so i've worked with uh SI programming with php and then c sharp and java uh then kotlin because i hated the, the npes in java and then uh some project technologies uh JavaScript, uh, CSS, and I learned uh, Vue.js along the way. So that sort of qualified me to be a full stack engineer, but with backend heavy. Yeah. No, sorry. Sounds great. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, dive into Golang world. Uh, okay. Let's start from running the program. How you can configure uh, working environments parameters and uh, how to execute the problem in the world. Yeah, so usually when you have a, um, a Go project, you want to keep things simple. So many times we start with uh, environment variables, uh, where you pretty much just include the variables in it. Like when you're starting, you have very few. So maybe a port, if it's a web service, you have a port here and maybe the, a few things. But then as the, as uh, the, Project gets bigger, you you will start to use like more complicated things uh, like YAML or JSON, and uh, it's nice that all this stuff is built into the standard library. So 
uh, you do not need to, most of the time, you do not need to have uh, external configuration um, uh, frameworks. But if you need something more complicated, you can use Viper uh, to handle your configurations, or you can use Consul to pick them from a remote system like Paul. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah, YAML is cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, girl, it's young. <laughs> okay, let's talk about interfaces a bit. How uh, how they're working in Go? Yeah, so like most languages, interfaces are used to define uh, the behavior you expect. Uh, and uh, in Go, it's pretty much the same. You define an interface by uh, saying type, the type, uh, the name of the interface you want, and then the keyword interface. And in calibrations, you include the methods that are uh, uh, that interface should have. And uh, the, it's interesting in Go that uh, you do not need to, in unlike Java, where you need to explicitly extend the interface uh, in Go, as long as you have the methods uh, of that interface, you implicitly uh, implement it. Yeah. So you, the interface and the implementer do not need to know each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. Mm. I'm thinking about starting a goal, actually. But... Oh, you should. <laughs> you should. It's really fun. Maybe you can help me with this. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of different uh, types of, um, you know, when you're assigning a variable, uh, a value, so different expressions, how I can mm -hmm. categorize them, what's the difference between them. I've seen a lot of uh, examples, like it's a C-based syntax or something. Can you bring yeah, them so, because I'm falling down with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with uh, with Go, there's uh, there's mainly two ways you can instantiate uh, a variable. Yeah. So uh, it, it's like like most C type languages, they use the Bacchus no form notation. So uh, pretty much you can have the variable name. And then, uh, okay, if you want to include the type, you can say var, the name, and then the type, because then you assign it. Or you can mm -hmm. assign it later. Like you can, you say var, the thing, then the type, and you can assign it later in the program. But if you want to assign it immediately. Hold on, hold on. Uh, what will be in the variable if I want to do assignment? Uh, and if I code or something? Okay, if uh, let me say it's an integer like age, I'm going to and then to say an age. So you can say var age int. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to use it later, you will you will assign it later, like age equals five. But you can yeah, also but, assign it there and then. But if I won't do this assignment and I will say age uh, equals h plus one, what will be yeah. um so if you did age equal h plus one, uh yeah. After okay, when the default value would be zero, uh, if it's a if it's a native type, like an age or a string, string will be blank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, so if you say age equals age, okay, if you say if you say var age int, then age equals age plus one, you get age is one. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. sounds uh, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you told that. Uh, mm, in Go, everything is an uh, object, right? Yeah. How, how can I get the type of this object? Uh, so I can think of three ways. Uh, the most common one is the, using the FMT package, which is in Butte. So I'm mm -hmm. uh, using one of its formatters. So uh, if you use the FMT with the T formatter, it will return the type, the underlying type. Uh, though if you did not assign it, you'll get now. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, the second way is uh, you can use um, uh, reflection. Yeah. So uh, there's a there's a package in the package in Go called reflect. Uh, so if you say reflect this type of, you get this comprehensive object with everything about that type, like um, uh, including its name, but everything like the fields it has, like if it's a a type of that's a struct. You'll have all the fields in there, like uh, the methods it implements and everything. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, the most commonly, uh, if you want to just know that type uh, during code execution, you can use assertion, like how you how you do it in Java and any other language, whereby you just get the variable name, like same as say full dot, then you uh, put in, curly, in, in in normal brackets the type you want to assert it to, like I want to check if full is a string, so you say full dot in bracket string, and it will it will return the string if it's there and uh, an optional boolean to tell you if the assertion was successful or not. It's by far the safest way to do it if you, if you just want to know the type. Okay, if you're sure the type is in there, but you want to assert that it's there. Yeah, I was uh, thinking to ask you how many uh, such uh, fails of assertion fails you're seeing in logs. <laughs> I won't be asking you this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming that the most, um, I'll say, regular usage is using a type a string type, right here. Yeah. For yeah. yeah if you if you if you many most of the time if you just want to display the type, it's safer to use the font and the font package and just return it as a string. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually if you're logging something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can we talk more about um, assignment? So what's happening uh, with the expressions uh, when with the um, curly brackets or square brackets? What's, what's the difference between them? Um, so, uh, curly braces are used to like uh, a statement blocks. Uh, most of the time uh, in the syntax, it will be uh, a, a body of like an if statement or a method, uh, something of that sort, or, or a definition of a struct or a type. Then uh, square brackets are usually used uh, uh, main, uh, mainly around, uh, there's, there's, there's a data structure called, um, okay, the data structure is called maps and, uh, what is that? Maps and structs, I think. No, maps and slices. Yeah, slices. Slices are like arrays. Yeah. So uh, you decide, uh, use curly braces. So square brackets, you pretty much denote that this is a uh, slice. Uh, mm -hmm. Slices are used as arrays. And also in maps to define the key. Yes. Yeah, so like map uh, square brackets, you put the key and then the value type and something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Okay, let's go forward. Um, mm -hmm. We need to cover one more topic, I guess. How the garbage collector works. I think it's important thing to talk about. Yeah. So um, one of the main reasons uh, people use Go is that um, the garbage collection is done for you and makes it plus plus. So. Um, the algorithm used in Go is uh, mark and sweep. Uh, there are many algorithms for garbage collection, but uh, Go is as mark and sweep. How mark and sweep works is uh, uh, on a regular interval, the, the, garbage, uh, the, the garbage collector will pause the whole world, like your whole program, and then mark which parts of the memory are active uh, by following references from the, from the root, from main. And then uh, the next, uh, step is it will concurrently delete uh, okay it will concurrently clear the references so that uh they are free to use by anything else and then it will unpause the world so that that's the sequence you mark and then you see mm, okay um, mm. Mm, what about what about tags how they're you uh working in go and what is the purpose of them Okay, so um, tags are a way to add more metadata to fields uh, in, a, in a struct. So um, uh, mainly they're used uh, for, uh, I've seen them mostly used by like uh, the SQL package, the JSON package, the uh, XML, YAML packages, and validation uh, to um, enforce uh, uh, serialization. Kind of right? <laughs> Yeah, they can be used like annotations, okay, like in Java. Like you pretty much add more metadata to a field, but you can't add them to like methods only to the fields. 
Uh, so the syntax is you use the accent, I think it's that's what it's called, the accent, like a thing <laughs> in the corner of your keyboard. Okay. Yeah, and in between that, you define uh, the, the, the name of the tag and uh, what it, and, and more meta data, like the name, uh, like uh, if in SQL, a column name, a column type, in uh, like uh, validation, we can define that this field can be a minimum of this and a maximum of this. Yeah. And uh, how you access them is you need to use a reflect package. Simple. Yeah. To use yeah. them to actually access them. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. How you can compare two objects in Go? Yeah, so um, comparison in Go is done by the double equals or the not equals operator. And uh, you can pretty much compare anything uh, as long as they are of the same type or as long as one of them is now. But uh, if you are comparing structs, you cannot compare uh, structs that contain uh, slices, methods, or um, maps. Yeah. What will happen but, if you will try? Uh, it will. It will. Uh, it will actually uh, fail to compile most of the time. Go like yeah, the compiler will catch it. It will not compile. But if you must compare uh, complicated types, mm -hmm. um, you can use the reflect deep equals. Uh, though, if uh, particularly for slices and maps, you need to implement uh, something custom to to actually do the comparison between that point of the data inside maps and slices. Though things might get better now that uh, generics has come out, because now you can uh, there'll be one an easy way of writing one implementation that works for multiple types. But for now, you need to write it for every type. You need to have a custom comparator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I was trying to prepare to this uh, mock interview, so I was googling about Golang a bit. Okay. So, um, can you tell me about um, how map works? So, what's the limitation for uh, inputs uh, of the map? Number, the key keys, and yep. Um. So. Um. Initially, uh, maps are allocated a byte size of 128 um, by the malloc function internally. But uh, in practical sense, there is no limit to how big your map can get. Uh, okay, it can be limited by the size of your key. Like if I choose an int, I'm limited by the size of the, of, uh, the int key. Yeah, but uh, the initial allocation is 128. You can't, there should be a way to increase it though. If you need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's, that's interesting. I think that's it for my side for now. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Roland. It was uh, really nice talking to you. Uh, to it everybody, yep. Yeah, thank you for tuning uh, into this mock interview ser series, and I hope you enjoy enjoy it as much as I did. We'll be back uh, with many more episodes uh, covering various different text stacks and languages. If you're looking for more specific mock, mock interviews, uh, please drop uh, in our inbox some suggestions, or you can uh, actually comment this video too. Don't uh, forget to give us a big fat thumbs up if you like this video, and take care and be safe. Safety. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.